Simcha prayer together means that joy breaks all boundaries. The Torah teaches us that we are all born with limitations. And every single person we're taught also has a neshama, which is unlimited. And to tap into that gives us incredible amount of abilities to do things we never dreamed or imagined possible. Simcha is joy in our body. Bringing up the place from here to here. There's a board of how happy someone could be and just like, you like burst that open. He's a character. He's funny, smart, creative. He's got wit. He's with it. He's wild. Lovable. Very energetic. Crazy fun loving. He's always, always happy. Everything I need is inside of me. I learned that I was pregnant with a child with Down syndrome when I was in the beginning of my ninth month of pregnancy. We had a six-week head start to prepare for what other people find out immediately after birth, which to me was a six-week blessing. It gave me time to absorb that information and figure out how to deal with it and how I wanted to relay that to my own family and my friends and community members. My mother called us into the hospital room and she said, okay, everybody sit down. <laughs> she said, you know, um, we have a baby. He's very special and he's not like anybody else. I had a very special friend at that time, and she told me that, um, in, that before a soul is born, it actually gets to pick the family that would be the best for, for himself. What would be the best fit? Where would, where would he want to be? And she said, I can't think of a family better than yours. And I knew that was so true. At the bris, um, my father gets up in shul and says to everybody, you know, announces to those who weren't familiar with pr previously that Simcha had, that he had Down syndrome, and that he said, and I quote, we're going to treat him like any other child. And I remember there was someone next to me who turned to me and said, does he mean that? And he meant it. Now he's the favorite. He is it. I did not know what Down syndrome was when Simco was born and it didn't really bother me at all because like it's just like, you know, baby is born, that's it, you know, like celebrate, Briss in eight days, yeah, let's go. Now it's like just like kind of flew in there. I don't know what age it just came to me that he was Down syndrome, but it's like now I know, back then I didn't. You don't always find the positivity and the way Simcha is viewed by his family as a real gift. They don't just say, oh, he's a gift from Hashem and this is what Hashem uh, wanted for us and we're lucky they really, really mean it. I'm lucky to have that in my family. I think living with Simcha and seeing him every single day definitely gives me an opportunity to spend quality time with him that not a lot of other people get the opportunity to have. He was one of the clan, one of the bunch. When we were all playing basketball outside, he was outside playing basketball along with us. We play movie. It's basically you, um, you imitate a movie, you have to try to guess what the other guy's saying. We dance, we play basketball, we sing, sometimes guitar. I get to have my kids 
grow up with him and they love him. They love him every time they see him, they get squeezed to death by him. Excited. He hugs us and this is awesome. He just runs to me and he's like gonna hug me, so I just run back to him. So guys are gonna get you. He's gonna be yeah. big we in the world. We're taught be happy. And happiness changes the presence of ourself and connects us to our neshama, which is the power of the unlimited. Fortunately, we have the same name, Simcha, which is Hebrew, and it means joy and happiness. And that's what Simcha is, is joy and happiness. He adopted the meaning of the name, and you don't know the meaning of the name until you meet Simcha. Simcha's joy and Simcha's happiness is very contagious. Well, the way it works is energy attracts energy. So when Simcha walks in the room, everybody's up and running around. Simcha's always singing in the car, always dancing in the car. Simcha is someone who just dances like no one is watching. So it's not just a kid with a vivacious energy for life. There's a gift that's very, very precious and very special. I think he gives Simcha when he comes in with his big smile and hugs for people. There's something about Simcha that's just, that makes everyone smile around him. Every time he's around, you can't help but feel joy and happiness. He cannot be sad for more than a minute. Yeah, I've never seen somebody just so instantly be happy. Like there is some, like people can be in a bad mood and they're in a bad mood all day, but Simcha would be in a bad mood for like five minutes and then you like put on some music and it's just like, bam, great mood. And that's something that like, I try to like copy and mimic all of Simcha, just whatever was going on two minutes ago, like does not matter. Because right now, we're dancing. There were so many times during our lives between me and my husband, between me and Simcha, between my children and Simcha, between all of us, just in occasion after occasion, repeatedly, where we are just, we break into laughter because of something he did, something he said, or just something that he just, he cracks us up. One thing he has a habit of doing, he comes to our room every single day, every morning, 7.30, and he opens the door and is like, guys, Minion, Minion, 7.30, task waiting, Minion. Like, okay, out of bed, you know, like, he's the alarm clock in the morning. I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's definitely a thing. <laughs> when Simcha would want to wake me up in the morning, he would come over to me and go, Mommy, Mommy, wake up. And I quickly learned that he was doing a little acting scene from Frozen. And I would answer, go back to sleep. Back to sleep. And he'd lay on my body, face up, and go, dance. but the sky's awake. awake. So I'm awake. I'm awake. So we have to play. to play. And I would say, go play by, by yourself. yourself. And my eyes are closed. I'm trying to really go back to sleep. And then Simcha would fall on the floor with a big sigh, and then get back and come over to me and go, and open one eye, uh, and go, you wanna build a snowman? And he just gets me every time. And I have to wake up, because who can't wake up to that? When I was nannying this summer, and I was in this bedroom, and I was like off duty, so I was like Skyping with a friend, and then Simcha comes in, and he has like, his father's like hat on, and he's holding a cane, like a massive cane, bigger than him. Don't know where this cane came from. And his suitcase, and he goes, okay, Razel, we're ready to go to the airport, like, let's go. The word simcha doesn't just mean being happy. You go to a comedy show and you'd be happy for 15 minutes and it didn't really make us happy. And I think about simcha and simcha makes people laugh, but he has simcha inside. It's, he's, his essence, his joy, he's not just making people laugh, he's not just getting people 
to react to him. There's something genuine about that. And I hope that not only he could live up to his name, but we could all learn to tap into that pure joy that we all have and need to show. He's not shy. <laughs> we know that already. Simcha is a child with no inhibitions, very little fear. He is always present in the moment. And so when Simcha walks into a room, Simcha is there with all of himself. And you know that, and you feel that, and he approaches the people in the room and sees them in their real state of being and connects to them in that kind of way. You don't really know what's going on in that little brain of his. So he's about 10 years old, and I get a phone call from a gentleman who I don't know. He lives in Chicago, and he says that his mom passed away, and his dad's alone, and every year they come on vacation to Orlando, and I, the child says, I asked dad to come to your shul to say Kaddish for his wife. So he came, he sat with his Chicago winter coat on, uh, obviously very uncomfortable. Took a talus, just wrapped it over himself like a shawl, just sat there, didn't really talk much, looked very sullen, very sad. Simcha, he comes, the whole shul knows he's there because everyone has to get a hug and a squeeze and a gachabas and a how you doing? So I watch the way he's going around, one person after the other, until he gets to this guy, Saul. And he taps Saul on the shoulder, and Saul looks at him. And he puts both of his hands on this guy's shoulders. Puts his left hand on the guy's left shoulder, and right hand, right shoulder, and he looks at him, he says, How you doing, papi? He says, I'm good. And all of a sudden, the guy starts crying. And after davening, I went over to him. I said, good job. Thanks so much for coming. I said, I got with him. And he says to me, Rabbi, I got a question. He says, do you have anyone in your family that you call Poppy? I said, no. I call my father Tom. My kids call me Ta. My wife calls her father Dad. Sometimes Grandpa. But no, we don't have Poppy. And he said, how would Simcha know of the name Poppy? I said, I have no idea. He starts crying and he tells me, do you know, every one of my grandchildren calls me Poppy. And the comfort that he got out of Simcha saying, how you doing, Poppy? And the hug that he got afterwards, it broke his sadness. And he was, he was really fine after that. Everything changed. So how did Simcha know? I have no idea. Did Simcha really know what he's doing for him? I still don't know. If I could tell you one thing, it's not the only time it happened. To Simcha, you are a human being. And that is the most beautiful thing ever. I came in about, about two weeks ago. And I sat down and he got my tzvillim. He took my tzvillim, took it out of the bag, and believe it or not, he put this film on for me. He dressed me. I left it just the way it was, by the way. Right or wrong is immaterial. It was right. Because I asked Rabbi Debov, I said to him, has he ever done this before to anyone else? I was the first one he ever dressed. So he's, uh, he's my partner. I know he's in everybody's partner. To me, he's a very special partner. He's my guy. Seriously, I think he's brought a level of happiness to our home and to our lives that could have never been done in any other way. Just watching him, if you see him for a few minutes and experience his hugs and his love, you, are, you can't not be affected by that. He has so much goodness to share with everybody. And, um, it's been so special having him as a brother.
he's the best. I don't know. All, all of the adjectives <laughs> that involve the best. There would be no way I would be this close to this family if it wasn't for some cut. And like this family, like whether they realize it or not, has helped me just tremendously like stabilize my life. And Simcha has been the reason for that. You never uh, forget about giving me a hug. Rabbi Dubov, when he sees Simcha, his face lights up. He always, always, always has a smile and a hug for Simpkins, Mushy, what does he call him? Uh, he's got, um, I'm not remembering all the nicknames, but the latest one is Simpkins. Glila, Simpkins, Glila. There was something happened last year in school that really showed how he affected the whole class. Um, we were doing a project in our second and third grade classroom. Every kid had to start a business and run the business. Every kid had a different store. So we had one kid who was preparing baked goods. Another kid had a, um, a clothing store. And one kid had a, a baby shop. I said, what's a baby shop? She goes, oh, you mean it's an adoption agency? I said, oh, that, that's really cute. So I like made paper babies. And I, like people bought them. And she says, this baby is $100. This other baby is $100. The twins are $500. And then there's a very special baby that's $1,000. I said, why is this baby special? She goes, oh, he has Down syndrome. He's very special. As they started playing the game and everyone was going to each other to buy things, um, she made a grand announcement to the whole class saying, who would like to buy a baby with, with Down syndrome? Who wants a special baby? And immediately, immediately a boy in the class said, oh, I want a baby with Down syndrome. I'll get the special baby, how much is it? And he was the first baby to be purchased. Ginkle ended up wanting to buy him. I was like, okay, but he's, ex he's more money because he's down syndrome and Ginkle said, I want that baby. It was special, it was just like Toka. So to me that really captured the essence of what the, how the kids were affected by Simha and what, what, how he um, makes a difference in kids' lives and in kids' views. So it's not just a kid with a vivacious energy for life. It's not just a kid who has special needs and expresses himself in a unique way. There's a gift that's very, very precious and very special. Simcha is so full of energy and life and we have so much that we can learn from him in that respect. He's just always running over to people, greeting them with a smile on his face, giving hugs unconditionally. Simcha has brought a, a tremendous light into this family and into this life that no one could have ever brought in any other way. It's like a one of a kind. I think he's really, really, really special. Like, it's basically like an eclipse. It's like special. I wouldn't have it any other way. He probably has added more to the school than we've given him because there's a certain um, layer of compassion that just came out in the kids when they were around, around him. He always showed love to everyone. He was the first to hug every teacher to walk into school. Um, first to hug every child who allowed him to. He really he brightens up the room. He lights up, uh, lights up people's lives. There's a video of him reading. <laughs> the fat cat sat on the mat. <laughs> Where he's reading and he's so proud. It was the first time he ever read words in context. And he just went over and flipped open the book and I think I was talking to another teacher and I like whipped around and he's got a book open and he's sitting there reading the words. You did what? Just sound it out and read what? it. Get over here. Do it again. Let me see right Tut. now. Tut. Tut. Cat. Lying flat on the mat. Oh, oh my God. So cool. It was beautiful. Awesome. Showing me that with persistence, and dedication, and just believing in someone that they can really be successful. Wow.
Last year we did this um, claymation project where the kids had to make different figures out of clay. Um, they were fighting over who would be with Simcha. The girls especially would want to read with him, would want to come over and join him in an activity. Um, I'll help Simcha, I'll help Simcha, I'll do it, I'll do it. Hands flying everywhere to be Simcha's little reading buddy. We love you Simcha! I feel like Simcha was, is not really here as much to learn as he is here to teach. I feel like he can give much more than he will get. Inspiration is foundational. And certainly when you think of Simcha and you see the will, his joy, the, his name means joy, you don't need to look very hard or very far to find inspiration for your own day to day. I think if everyone would look at Simcha and just learn one trait from him, the world would be a better place. Even though he has some other people, I think other people can learn from him because we know that he is smart, kind, funny. He's taught me patience. Just this purity that you constantly see in him is just a constant reminder that we have to keep that purity of a child and childlike within us alive all the time. I could learn from some heart to always, to always try to be happy. People sometimes say that I'm nice and stuff, so I like the I really I think I like being Simcha. There's more to life than being sad and uh, angry or holding grudges or anything like that. It's so much more enjoyable to just be happy. Knowing how to deal with the setbacks when they come, um, how would joy react, how would Simcha react, and you realize that there never really is a bad day, it's just, you know, one moment to the next. And when you take happiness without any constraints, Simcha parents get there, <laughs> quite literally. And if we as adults, with all of our stress and all of our fears and all of our anxieties and all of our worries and all of our concerns about what tomorrow will be, will learn to live in the way that this freedom allows us to, we'll have the same stresses and we'll have the same responsibilities and we'll have the same fears, but they'll be in a spirit of such joy and such life that it will make our life so much more meaningful and happier. I can be stronger, I can be braver, I can be, I can be anything, anything I want to be. Cause you believed, cause you believed in me. I love you too much.